Uh, welcome to the second episode of Crypto Chats. Um, today we're going to talk about one of my favorite cryptids. Um, <laughs> I guess they're all my favorite. There's <laughs> not really any I don't like. But anyway, we're going to talk today about this bad bitch right here. Um, the Flatwoods Monster. Um, also known as the Braxton County Monster. And then also, also known as uh, the Phantom of Flatwoods. So, um, this guy's real weird, uh, looks like a weird creepy alien, has this like weird spade head, green skin, glowing red eyes, um, talon hands, very interesting. Um, the Flatwoods Monster has made a big impact on pop culture, which I think is really cool. Um, and I mean, especially for something with only one really like well-known sighting, I think it's like super neat that it's like made that big of an impact on things to be represented in the way that it is in pop culture. So September 12th, 1952, we're in Flatwoods, West Virginia. Um, you'll start to notice a trend. There are a lot of cryptids that start popping up um, in West Virginia, um, the Appalachia Mountains. Uh, there's like weird shit happening there. I don't... <laughs> I don't really know, but they have a lot of cryptids there, and so that's where we're going to be. West Virginia, uh, Flatwoods area, um, 1952. So let's paint a little picture. We've got uh, these three young boys aged like six to nine, I believe. Um, Ed, Freddie, and Tommy. Uh, these three kids are playing at the schoolyard. Um, it's I would assume probably like just before dusk, like starting to get a little bit dark out, but not quite dusk yet. Um, while these kids are playing, they see what they think is a UFO shoot through the sky. Um, they reported it as having um, flashing red lights and it's like streaking through. And what they see is it crashing in a farm nearby where they're playing. Um, so as kids all have this curious nature to them. Um, they want to go and investigate and see what it is. Um, but they were pretty smart and they are like, we're going to go get our mom and bring her with us. Um, which I think is very good. It's a very good thing that they did. Um, so these kids go back to the home of Kathleen May. Um, Kathleen May being, I believe Ed and Freddie's mom, um, could be wrong, but I believe it's Ed and Freddie and then Tommy's the friend. Um, so they go and get their mom, Kathleen May, and she is like, hell yeah, I'll go with you. Sounds great. I mean, I like to think that she was like really excited about it um, because I, I don't know, I would just like to hope that like, she would like see the like childlike wonder in their eyes and be like, oh my God, fuck yeah. But like realistically, it was probably more that she was like, you guys are going to do something stupid. So I'm going to go with you and be a responsible parent, which I, I respect that. That was a good choice on her part. Um, so we've got Kathleen May and then 17 year old, uh, national guard member, uh, Jean Lemon also goes with them. Um, and then another young boy whose name I could not find, unfortunately. Um, and then Kathleen May's family dog, his name was Ricky. He sounded really cute. I didn't get to see him, but he sounded adorable. So they go and check out this scene and like responsible people, they all bring flashlights. They all stay in a group and they go to approximately where um, these kids had seen this UFO crash. Uh, when they get there, they see they're met with these bright red glowing eyes looking at them from a tree like perched on a tree branch um which is really spooky but you know a lot of animals their eyes reflect red when you shine a light at them um nope that might be wrong i don't know that for sure there's a lot of stuff in my brain not all of it is real anyway so <laughs> they have these bright red eyes glowing at them um, and they go to investigate a little bit, shine their flashlights up at them, and what they are met with is this terrifying looking creature with a spade-shaped head, long talon claws, green skin, and glowing red eyes that is just staring at them from perched on this tree branch. I don't know about any of you guys, but that would scare the shit out of me. Um, 
I think it would probably scare most people, whether you are the toughest human being alive or not, that's still very scary. Um, so it is like these people, um, these eyewitnesses essentially were like, okay, well fuck that, which I think is fair. Um, and as they are processing all of these things that is happening in front of them, that are happening in their brains, all of this information that they are gathering as they are witnessing this creature in the tree, um, the Flatwoods monster then proceeds to start hissing at them, which if it wasn't already really creepy, that just really does it. Like if it wasn't already scary, now it's hissing at you. And like when things start hissing at you, I feel like that's when you're like, no, like this was already weird. You just brought it to a whole new level. You got to get out of there. So the <laughs> they're processing this new level of like threatening from this like unknown creature that's staring at them. And then they report that the Flatwoods monster lunges at them off of the tree branch. Now at this point, I myself probably would have like pissed my pants, like been crying, I don't know. I realistically would have been so scared. Um, and they did what most people would do and they ran away. And I can't say I blame them because that just sounds like a bad time. So they run from this monster and yeah. Okay, so we have um, this like these six or seven people um, who all see this like terrifying creature. You know, they report it to the news, to the police, and then the police, the story gets out to the news people. And um, basically a lot of people kind of like wrote this entire thing off as a hoax, which I, I can understand a little bit if you're like afraid and don't really want to accept that it's real. But then you have these like this group of people who's like beyond traumatized being like, that was the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. Um, so these people, unfortunately, were kind of just like the butt of the joke for a while, which is fucked. Um, and then like most towns and cities that end up with these big cryptid sightings, um, places like Flatwoods, West Virginia and like Point Pleasant, West Virginia, all of the Pacific Northwest, um, these places that are known for these, these specific sightings, they start to feed into that um, and kind of just accept that that's what they're known for. Um, and again, that is the case in Flatwoods, West Virginia. Um, it's really neat actually because in the town, next to the town hall, they have this really cool <laughs> Flatwoods monster chair. Um, and keep an eye out on Instagram because I'm sure at some point in my life I'm going to end up there and you will see a photo of me with this neat chair. Um, they also do a Flatwoods monster festival every year, which I think is fucking cool. And again, watch for the pictures because eventually when we are not in a corona world um you will see me there uh because that is something i really want to do i think it's really neat that towns will embrace that part of their um history i guess um because i i don't really see why you wouldn't want to hmm i don't have an answer for that is there something else i can help with Siri just chimed right on in with her opinion. Um, wasn't that helpful though. Anyway, um, another thing I think is really cool, I'm getting a little, I'm like rambling a little bit too much today. I'm not as organized as I was last time, but that's okay, I hope you will all forgive me. Um, another thing I think is really cool about the Flatwoods Monster is how much of an impact it has made on pop culture. Um, so if you play video games, really at this point kind of any genre of video games except for like maybe the sims which no hate we all love the sims but any other genre of video game for the most part you're gonna find some reference to the flatwoods monster um if you've ever played uh legends of zelda majora's mask um one of the little enemies that you have to fight this little fellow right here is actually um a reference to the Flatwoods monster, which is really cool. And I, I appreciate that that was something that was brought into their game. Um, Fallout 76 is another one that has 
Um, this guy here, another reference to the Flatwoods monster. Um, there's a couple other ones. I wrote them down. I'll read them to you. Space Harrier 2, Strikers 1945. There's another one, but I can't read my own handwriting, so I can't tell you what it is. But it is like super, super cool um, that this cryptid made enough of an impact on people and like looked scary enough and looked weird enough that these video game developers were like, hey, you know what? We're gonna add this fucking weird thing into our game. And if you know, you know. And if you don't, now you do. Um, just super cool. Um, oh, another thing too. Um, I So if you have never been to the cryptozoology, uh, the International Cryptozoology Museum in Portland, Maine, um, when you know, COVID is cleared up and we're all living a more normal life again. It is definitely um, something that I suggest that you check out. It's a super cool place. Um, I've been there once now. I do want to go back. Um, but they have a whole section on the Flatwoods Monster. Um, and it's really interesting because a lot of it is specifically about its place in pop culture. Um, they have a diorama of... Um, the Flatwoods Monster in Fallout 76. There is a really neat pamphlet you can get that just has a bunch of information on it. It's really cool. I definitely suggest you check it out. That place is awesome. Um, if you have been there, hell yeah, let's talk about it. If you haven't, go at some point and let me know what you think. Um, that being said, I this is basically the end of my next video. I'm so sorry it was so short. Um, and I apologize for rambling a little more than I did last time. Um, but I would really love to hear from everybody about what you would like to see. Um, I'm planning on making another video to put out next week as well. Um, so, you know, comment, leave me a comment, send me a message. Um, I'd like to hear from you guys about what sort of things you would like to hear me talk about. Um, so let me know because that would be really cool. Um, and again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, and I hope you guys stick around for next week. Bye.